Alright guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be doing something a little different. I have here two P. Regius. This is the Regal Jumping Spider, which, to my knowledge, is the largest species of jumping spider, at least in North America anyway. We've got our beautiful female right here. And then we've got a mature male over here. Now, these are a little bit different from the tarantulas that are normally featured on this channel. Not only do your jumpers have far, far better eyesight than any tarantula does. In fact, they use their eyes as one of their primary resources to hunt and track their prey. But these are actually very, very intelligent little spiders. And I don't want to say that they can become domesticated because that may be stretching the truth a little bit. But it has been proven that these can become familiar with their owners and will actually... Um, become conditioned to handling and thus will tolerate a lot more hands-on interaction than any tarantula or Mike Alamorph spider ever would. They're also quite active little spiders. They don't sit in the same spot for hours on end like the majority of tarantulas do. So if you're looking for a, an arachnid pet that's a lot, a little bit more lively and exciting you just might want to look into getting one of these little critters so as you can probably tell looking at the setup these are arboreal spiders so they do like to climb and very similarly to your avix as well as certain other arboreal tarantulas they create a silk hammock and the upper portion of their terrarium which serves as their hide in spite of this though i actually do catch mine out and about quite frequently away from their webs now jumping spiders tend to be diurnal hunters meaning that they are out hunting during the daylight hours as opposed to nighttime as with the majority of spiders, including tarantulas. So we've got here a female. And um, we're actually going to be doing a pairing today. And we've got a male over here. You guys will get a better look at them in just a moment, but they're quite easy to tell apart from one another with this particular species. There we go, now we can have a better look at her. Very, very pretty little spider. Now your female regals are quite easy to tell apart from the males. Your females tend to be a bit fluffier and they've got that distinct reddish orange pattern all over their bodies. And I know you can't see them right now, but the chelicerae, or the jaws, are a bright purple, almost violet kind of color. Now, your males, on the other hand, not only are they a bit smaller, but they are much darker in coloration. They have a almost like a domino black and white like color. They've got a solid black body with white stripes and bands all over the body. And their chelicerae are a bright, shiny, emerald green color. Let's see, there's our male. But, uh, as always, you always wanna introduce the male into the female's enclosure. 
never the other way around. You do not want your female to be stressed whatsoever during mating, and this goes with any spider. All right, now, don't jump out on me. See, now, the tricky thing with these spiders is because they have <clears throat> such good eyesight, They'll oftentimes see me way sooner than I can see them. Whereas your typical tarantula a lot of times won't even know you're there until you're practically right on top of them. So we've introduced the male to the female or he introduced himself, I should say. And it's very, very imperative at this point that we do not disturb either one of them. We don't want them to even know that we're present. We just want them to be able to focus on one another. And jumping spiders have a very, very unique courtship. They do... Um, almost sort of a, a maiden dance. The male's dance is particularly impressive. He'll actually lift up his pedipalps and his front pairs of legs and wave them around in almost a uh, sort of a cordon display. Yep, he's tapping his pedipalps, trying to get her attention. Looks like so far she's receptive. So these do get pretty big, especially for jumping spiders. Males usually reach around three quarters of an inch, maybe a little bit smaller once mature. And females I've seen get close to about an inch in leg span. So quite massive for a, a jumping spider. Especially when you consider how small most of the other species are. And the care is quite straightforward. These are, I believe, 32 ounce deli cups. I've given them maybe half an inch of substrate. Much like your avicularia, they don't go down to the ground very often. So substrate is more so for uh, humidity purposes rather than it is uh, to provide the spire with a, a means to burrow or anything like that. And then just uh, a cork bark branch of some sort for them to climb on and anchor their web into. And then a couple of plastic leaves or vines to serve as additional anchor points. 
And of course, your little itty bitty water dish, which all I did was use a, a water bottle cap. And then you can either anchor or glue it up somewhere high. There you go. Now you guys can see the green chalice ray. Absolutely beautiful colors that these spiders have. I'm surprised these are not more popular in the hobby because they really are something special. Now, our female doesn't seem too receptive, so I may just put the male back in his home and try this again later. Well, 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 it all makes sense now. So I figured out why our little lady was playing hard to get. Some of you may be wondering what this big orange blob with all the webbing around it is. Well, this is actually an egg sack. What's even more awesome is that chances are this is very likely to be a fertile egg sack as well. As you can see, she has created almost like a silken dome around it. And she has completely sealed herself in along with her egg sac. I know the camera's probably not picking that up too well, but there she is. Being a good little mama. So, I'd say in about two to three weeks, possibly a little longer, we should have us some little jumping spider slings. And what I've done here is I put a butterfly net around her entire enclosure. And the reason being is that when these slings hatch, they're going to be teeny, teeny, tiny little spiders. Probably around an eighth of an inch, and they could easily slip out through the little air holes I have drilled into her enclosure, should the eggs happen to hatch while I'm not home. And this net will help keep them contained, as well as allow me to separate them without too much hassle. Now I have heard from other keepers that our jumpers tend to be a lot less likely to eat their egg sac before it hatches than most tarantulas. So I do plan to leave the sac with mom until they hatch. And if anyone out there watching has kept these guys, or any jump inspired species for that matter, I would love to hear your experiences with them. So please feel free to chime in in the comments section. And with that being said, you folks watching will definitely have something to look forward to within these next couple of weeks. Alright guys, well that about wraps it up for this one. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any upcoming ones. And feel free to follow us on social media. And as always, my fellow arachnoholics, stay awesome.